A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him, and they went away. This is the word of the Lord. You know, talk about being between a rock and a hard place, right? On the one hand, Jesus has the Pharisees, his faithful nemeses, religious leaders of Israel, who abhor the foreign government of the Romans and their pagan gods and their pagan emperor, and who hate the imperial taxes upon their nation, and, let us not forget, who are out to get Jesus. And on the other hand are the Herodians, King Herod's officials, the people who support the collection of those taxes, and whose power depends upon making the Jews pay and pay and pay, all while keeping the Roman government happy. And Jesus has to choose between these two. The road is split right down the middle, and either way is a bad one. To side with the Pharisees is to alienate the Herodians and to stir up the Roman government against him. To side with the Herodians is to sympathize with the Romans, to support the imperial taxes, and to make Jesus a traitor to his people. So what is he to do? Talk about being squeezed by your politics. I wonder, have you ever been caught in a double bind? Ever had to choose between two situations, knowing that whatever you choose, something is lost. Something just doesn't feel right. I think life throws these situations at us all the time. Sometimes I think life is this sort of situation. We have to choose constantly. We choose our mates. We choose our professions. We choose our morals. We choose our churches. And you know, it's not always fair, right? Not everyone has the same resources in the choosing choose, we still must. I think we spend a lot of time in life in that place of on the one hand, and, but on the other hand. For every stand we take, there's often some other thing we must forego. We might take a stand that could alienate our friends, or we might have to compromise ourselves and our values to avoid loss or conflict. You know, the bottom line is, it's just not easy being human. So I sure appreciate the way that our teacher, our Savior, shows us that we can go. You know, when Jesus is asked to choose between two opposing situations, he just makes another path. He chooses neither of the paths laid before him by those who would trap him in his worldly allegiances, but rather Jesus just travels another road. In this situation, you know, should we pay the taxes? Well, he says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, but give to God the things that are God's. <laughs> now, that answer might only seem a little bit simple, but really it's quite profound for those of us who would choose to live by faith. While life may often ask us to choose between divided loyalties, maybe it's family or business, maybe it's God or self, maybe it's self or others, Jesus reminds us that we really have only but one overarching priority as Christians, and that's to be sure that we live the way that God calls us to live. Well, we still have our responsibilities to our jobs and our nation, our families and our churches and our communities, but all of those responsibilities and all of our choices are seen within that all-encompassing light of the love of God and the call to love our neighbor. So I suppose there are sort of three images, three roads which come to my mind in light of the story today from Matthew's Gospel, and a look at them may help in other aspects of our lives. So 
you know, two of these things are really temptations, but the third, that's the other way. So first, Jesus said to give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things that are God's. But often it's really tempting to give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and also give to the emperor the things that are God's. In whom do we put our faith, our fidelity? In whom do we put our trust? Who do we most honor? From whom do we seek our values for living with one another? And from whom would we seek our salvation? Jesus reminds us that things like our faith and our trust and our honor and our values and our hopes for salvation are things that first belong to God. I'm afraid that too many people around the world can blindly follow some religious leaders. They did then, and we still can now. Or maybe too many uncritically follow the emperors or the politicians. They did back then, and we can still do that now. You know, second, I think it's often tempting to give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things that are the emperor's. I think this is the trap into which the Pharisees fell. They offered to God an appropriate religious standard, but they forgot that God wanted their love and not their love for God per se or their love for God's sake, but really God wanted their love for everyone else. Jesus criticized the Pharisees for not making any waves with the empire, meeting all the right requirements of faith and politics without really loving and caring for the people they were supposed to be teaching and serving. When we give to God the things that are God's, we're living in love with others. We're giving dignity to others. We're sowing peace. We're forgiving. We're sharing with those in need. We're speaking with honesty. We're listening to the frustrations and the laments and the stories of others, and we're trying to reconcile all humankind. You know, when we see Jesus this morning caught between these two seemingly opposing paths, yeah, he just sort of makes that third way. He brings the two opposing paths together into one straight road that leads from God and goes toward God. When we talk that road of faith, we're called to see all sides of a decision, not from a place of divided interests, but from the one path upon which Jesus would lead us, the singular path, first focused upon love of God and love of neighbor. And from there, we make those difficult choices demanded of us by our life circumstances nearly every day. You know, we may live in a divided world, in divided times. But God's way is always the way of caring and loving and generosity and faithfulness toward one another. Sure, meet your obligations in this world, but don't forget to give to God what belongs to God.